In this presentation, we're going to be looking at some of the modeling tips and tricks that I presented at my AU class. So just like the previous video, if you're an advanced Maya user, you probably know a lot of this stuff. You might pick up one or two things here and there, but for the new users to Maya, this video will probably, um, probably help you out a good bit. So the first thing that we want to talk about is the ability to use um, some of the options in the translation tool to assist you when you're trying to shift edges around. So this character's obviously got some geometry that's already been modeled as well as some UV work that's already been done, but you can see that those edges really aren't flowing very well. So what I want to do is I want to pull this edge down, and the problem is because I've already done the UV layout work, if I just grab this edge, and maybe this edge, you know, we'll do a, an edge loop select on those guys, and we start to pull it down, you can see that it really starts to distort that texture map. So luckily, if we go to our Move Options, we have the ability to preserve UVs. So what this does is it lets me translate those edges and sort of have those UVs get reprojected as I do that. So it allows me to get that edge to be a little bit flatter here, and we didn't really squash down that UV space. So it really is a great tool. And you know, you'll find yourself turning on and off to preserve UVs, but just knowing that it's there right, right underneath the Q key, holding Q down and clicking your left mouse button, like we talked about in the previous video, allows me a really quick access to that preserve UVs function. So the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and look at some of the um, some of the selection tools that we can use on a character in regards to our face. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate our selection so that we're only viewing this selected geometry in our viewport using the isolate select underneath the show menu. It's a good idea to make sure that you turn on auto load new objects. It's not on by default, but I pretty much always turn it on. And we'll go ahead and we'll turn on view selected now. So you can see that we can now, um, let's just hit our F key and frame it on our character's head here. We've isolated our selection so that we're only seeing the geometry for our character's head. Now that we've got that done, you'll notice that my background isn't showing the default Maya gradient. And the way that I got rid of that was using a hotkey, Alt-B. So Alt-B allows you to toggle through various different background colors, including the original background gradient that Maya ships with. So what we want to do is talk about edge loop selects and ring loop selects and different ways of doing selections inside of Maya. So if I right mouse click on a piece of geometry, obviously I get the radial pop-up that allows me to select an edge. If I pick an edge and I go and select my left or right arrow key, I'm going to do an edge loop select. If I click the left or right arrow key one more time, it allows me to walk through the neighboring selections, the neighboring edge loop selects. If I click the up and down arrow keys, it goes ahead and executes a ring loop select. And again, using the up and down arrow keys, tugging, kind of walking through them, allows me to walk through the neighboring ring loop selects. Another way of doing edge loop selection is just to take an edge and double click on it. That'll do a complete edge loop select. A final way of doing edge loop selects is to do an isolated edge loop select. And that allows you to basically select one edge and then double click on another edge holding down the shift key. It'll select the shortest distance between those edges. So the next thing that we want to talk about are some of the snapping options that we have and some of the constraining options that we can use when we're doing snapping. So obviously there's grid snap, curve snap, point snap, snap to a grid, snap to a live surface, snap to an image, to a view plane. And we can use hotkeys to kind of turn these on and off. So it's X, C, and V for grid, curve, and vertices snapping. So if I was to grab some vertices, let's just grab a selection of verts here. We'll grab these four guys. Let's undo that. We'll grab those four. And I hold down my V key and I start to try to snap it over to this point. You can see that it snapped those four vertices to that point, but it preserved um, their spacing. And the reason that it preserved their spacing, again, if we hold down the W key and click with the left mouse button, you can see that it has keep spacing turned on. So if we turn that off and we use the same prop, the same hotkey, holding down the V key to turn on point snapping, you can see it turning on the icon up there, and clicking with my middle mouse button over to this point, you can see that they have now snapped down to each other. So we'll go ahead and we'll let that go. The other thing that we might want to do is sometimes you want to go ahead and align a series of vertices and snap them to a grid. So if we go ahead and we grab um, all of these vertices, again using that shift double click to select the selection here, and I want to constrain it and have it snap to a grid down the x-axis, all I have to do is click on the x-axis to constrain it, hold down my x key to turn on grid snap, and then just start moving with my middle mouse button. And you can see it goes ahead and it snaps to that grid. Now here's one thing to be aware of. Obviously we had the keep 
um, spacing turned off. But if we're in object mode, notice the effect that I have. Holding down the X key again, turning on grid snap, using my middle mouse button and gesturally swiping across, notice that I'm snapping to the grid, but it's preserving the spacing of those CVs, the unique spacing of those CVs, and it's not stacking them all up down the x-axis on that grid. And the reason it's doing that is because it's in object mode. So just keep in mind that if you want to do grid snapping constrained to an axis, you have to switch over to world mode to have that actually work. So the next thing that we want to talk about really quickly is soft select inside of Maya. So there's a couple different ways of doing soft select in Maya. There's the traditional soft select that rides on the actual transformation tools. There's soft select in the next toolkit, as well as the soft modifier. And I'm going to talk about the basic soft select and a couple of the um, hotkeys that you can use to work with it. So if we go ahead and we select a vertice, and I hit the B key, it turns on soft select. If I click the B key and keep, keep it pressed down, and click with my left mouse button and keep it pressed down and move my mouse left to right, it allows me to adjust the radius from its previous starting point. If I keep the B key held down and I click my middle mouse button and hold it down and begin moving left to right, my radius starts at zero and builds, it way, it builds itself up. So again, the middle mouse button starts from zero, the left mouse button starts from its previous destination or previous starting radius. So that's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, but very, very useful inside of Maya. So the last modeling tip that I want to um, kind of talk about briefly is using animation deformers as modeling tools. I do this all the time. The lattice deformer, the nonlinear deformers like the bend and the twist or make amazing modeling tools. One of my favorite modeling tools or animation tools that I like to use as a modeling tool is the wire deformer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the wire deformer to change the profile of our character's nose. So we're going to go ahead and turn on Smooth Mesh Preview by hitting my 3 key. We'll select an edge, and we're going to turn off Soft Select here, and I'm going to add to my selection another edge further down our nose by holding down the Shift key. And we're going to take this selection of curves or edges and modify those and convert those into an actual NURBS curve. So we're going to say Polygon Edges to Curve. This actually has history on it. And I don't want to have the history there because we're going to actually deform the piece of geometry. And this would create sort of like a cyclic loop. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to just go ahead and delete the history on that active object. So with that done, we can go ahead and we can rebuild this curve. Because right now, every um, everywhere there is a polygon um, vertice, there's going to be a control vertice on this curve. So I want to have a kind of slightly limited set of controls to modify this surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and say rebuild curve on this guy to limit the number of control vertices on that guy and we'll go ahead and we'll turn on our control vertices for this curve looks like I need to display this guy so let's say show CVs so I can grab those control vertices and begin using my arrow keys to walk through these and you can see that I get this um, actually we haven't enabled the wire tool yet so let's go ahead and add the wire tool onto our character so we'll jump back to our animation tools and we're going to go ahead and create this new deformer. So we'll say create a wire deformer using the wire tool. So we have to select a piece of geometry, hit the enter key, select the curve that we want to use, hit the enter key, and now we can go back and grab that control vertice on that curve and use our arrow keys to begin reshaping the overall profile grabbing those CVs using the arrow keys to select them and use that to shape the overall profile of our character's nose. Now the thing that I really like about the uh, the wire tool is it's a very flexible tool. If I grab this piece of geometry and go back into the input stack for it, I can use this to start adjusting how far that wire tool's drop-off reaches. Using the scale it allows me to pull a nice hard crease if I wanted it, so it's a very very powerful modeling tool. One of the other things that's really kind of nice about this wire tool is we also have the ability to paint its weights. So we can adjust the region of the, uh, the influence that this wire tool has by painting luminosity values. So if we flood this with a value of zero, we basically turned off that wire tool. If we go back to our paint with a replace of one, I can do this in sort of a nonlinear fashion. I can have that wire tool really affecting the left side of my character's face, but not really affecting the right side of my character's face. And we'll kind of smooth that out a little bit. 
So it's a very powerful feature inside of Maya, the ability to use these animation deformation tools to do some basic modeling changes to our character is, is, is extremely powerful. So those are just a few of the modeling tips and tricks that I showed at the AU class, specifically in regards to modeling. I hope you enjoyed them.